A faraway memory, three kids spending peaceful days, but their daily life shall be taken away. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, it's me GamerTorque and it's time to dive right into the second trailer for Sword Art Online Elicization. Now the anime has been confirmed for 4 cores which is around 50 episodes give or take and will air on October 6 in Japanese TV and shortly after in your regional anime streaming platforms. Now if you haven't watched the trailer yet or you know just want to watch it again because both OAR's ending as well as Lisa's opening have been revealed in this trailer. Aside from the trailer just looking absolutely amazing in general, click the icon on the upper right, this video will wait for you. But I do not need to wait for you because if you click the video will pause anyway. So this is Sword Art Online Elicization Explained and I will be talking about every single detail about this trailer for about 10 minutes. But hey, at least I'm thankful that I'm able to bring something of value to these videos with my knowledge unlike those quote unquote trailer breakdown videos where some dude just says, here's a giant tree. And there is that tree again. Hmm, the tree must be important. Watch out though, this may be more spoilery than my usual explained videos because unlike the previous trailer where a lot of things were told by the trailer hence giving me a leeway to talk into them, this trailer is showing a lot of things but not talking about them. So for this time around I'll be the one providing the context to the scenes here and some of you may take that to be spoilers no matter how light I'll touch on certain things. If you're not okay with this, click the icon on the upper right corner for my previous much less spoilery explained videos for elicization. And also, naturally, I'll be referring to the source material, so I online light novels a lot. And if you're interested in reading elicization, which I highly recommend for obvious reasons. Amazon affiliate links to the books will be down in the description if you want to support my channel while also getting a chance to read these. But without further ado, the trailer once again is completely from Sword Art Online Volume 9, the first volume of the 10 volume journey for Elicization. Mostly stuff from the 1 hour long premiere episode and one or two scenes from future episodes, again not going any further than Volume 9. We start off in the northern town of Rulid with the Giga Cedar in foreground and End Mountains in the back. All of which I talked about in more detail in my What is Sword Art Online Elicization video and if you haven't seen it I strongly recommend checking that out first because I won't be repeating fundamental information I shared over there. We cut to Yu-Gi-Oh chopping at the tree as usual and three kids having lunch next to the tree. Kirito along with Alice and Yu-Gi-Oh when they were 11 years old. but. These pleasant memories wouldn't last long as they decide venturing on an adventure to improve their lunch quality. We even get to see why they left in a later screen shortly but before we go there we see them reaching the end mountains here. Being the border between the human empire and the dark territory, end mountains is kind of a grey area in terms of taboo index. The index is absolute and prohibits entry to the dark territory and nobody in underworld can even attempt to break said set of rules. But interpreting the rules in a certain way, for example thinking like end mountains are just the border not exactly part of the dark territory, the trio managed to get inside. But with the title card their daily life shall be taken away, we cut straight to Alice being imprisoned by an integrity knight for breaking the taboo index. I know things are a bit confusing but it's the way the trailer has been cut together combined with me still trying to be as vague as possible just stick with me. We see Alice's basket on the ground with ice rolling out from it, a rare commodity that you wouldn't find in the city since you know there are no fridges in underworld if you got the hint so far, wink wink. Once again, Yu-Gi-Oh's red seal on his eye attempting to break the taboo index but as I said the rules are absolute for underworldians and we get to see Alice taken away by the dragon of the integrity knight as Aoi-Air's ending song kicks in. And while this is the first episode, do keep the face of the integrity knight in your mind. That specific knight is Du Solbert Synthesis 7. We see Kirito breaking through the crowd and shouting for Alice and judging from the background where you can see the dragon going away, this is right after the dragon took off after taking Alice. 
Yujiro got rid of his eye seal, but is still dumbfounded by what he has gone through, while Kirito is obviously angry at this situation. But next up, we get to see Kirito in a hospital slash lab coat crying. I talked about this scene in the previous videos as well, since this is an anime original scene, and the trailer pretty much confirms this is right after Alice has been taken away. I'm confident in saying this much, because the trailer explains this well enough. For clarification, this scene is not after Kirito is injected with the drug you saw. This scene is way before that. In the back, you can see a device and that is the Soul Translator device Kirito has been testing throughout. With some heavy exposition on certain brain theories that I'll spare you, the STL connects directly to a person's... what you may just call quote unquote soul and uses that to transfer them into a virtual world. As Kirito explains to Asuna and Shinon, he does not retain his memories after the main experiments, hence why the completely shaken look on his face as he cries. You know, he just experienced his friend of 10 years get taken away from him as an 11 year old little child, causing his body to react in a manner of mentally breaking down, yet he has absolutely no clue why, which I really feel like this is a great scene to, you know, highlight that memory loss aspect. But then we cut back again to the cave before Alice was taken away and you can see all the ice around within the cave, but the ice is not the reason Alice got in trouble. There are much more interesting things inside the cavern that you'll see during the episode as well as on the other side of the cave. Shinon asks, you know, how is the world inside and <laughs> well, to that I'll say cats too many cats, in every shape, in every form, fluffy, cuddly, flying, bouncing, all kinds of cats. Though, to reiterate, Kirito does not remember anything from the main experiments, so he can't answer this question extensively anyways, but the dialogue is cut off early here. We get to hear a bit of the technology behind Soul Translator with the definition of Fluctlight, as we see Alice using quote unquote magic or sacred arts as it's called in Underworld to turn the flower into a light source. Again, as I explained in my what is Alicization video, Alice is very talented at sacred arts, but of course, aside from the light novel readers, my viewers and especially my patrons are getting all this information before everyone else now that I am sharing my video scripts as a small reward for my dear supporters on Patreon. What a shameless plug! Sorry, I was recommended I mentioned these in the middle of my videos. Subscribe, you know, hit that bell icon, support me, all that jazz. Moving on! We cut to Kirito talking about the seed that Kayaba gave him, once again, from a completely different place in the dialogue. This is obviously not the natural way of the conversation, it's just bits pulled together for the trailer. And it's cut together as if he was saying this right before he got injected. Not the case, no. The assault has nothing to do with the seed, it's, it's much more personal. And this is followed by Kirito falling down, completely shutting down as Asuna is running towards him, you know, everything we have seen in the previous trailer as well. There are two screens that show up for a single frame only during this glitch transition. First one is this one right here with 2002 05, error and a bunch of numbers. The second frame is Kont staying there for continuing probably, a bunch of numbers. And, you know, the 2001-01 is very similar to a date. Now, as I said, what I assume to be dates are very clear. May 2002 from the first screen and January 2001 from the second one. While I have no clue about the latter, 2002 is the year Reiki Kawahara wrote the first volume of Sword Art Online for a Dengeki Bunko contest. However, he was over the word count limit and he didn't want to shorten his story, so he didn't submit hence the error. Though this theory assumes this happened during May, whereas I don't have any confirmation for the month. Everything else, your guess is as good as mine. They may be referring to IDs with an underworld, though that's unlikely since we get to see the ID of Giga Cedar in a bit, and the IDs are alphanumeric combinations and you know, start with letters instead. But cutting to the brand new OP by Lisa titled Adamas, the scenes we see here are from an episode beyond the first one. We're back in the ice cavern in the end mountains with current age Kirito fighting against a band of goblins. I'll keep the reason they went back to the mountain for the anime to reveal, but fighting these goblins here 
is one of the biggest turning points, especially early on in Elicization. Especially this, what, what seems like an incredibly dynamic shot, is pretty damn amazing to watch. And the final goblin in the back, that is different from the regular grunts, is the leader of this goblin band. As a neat little detail, in the previous videos I talked about, you know, artificial floodlights that are essentially like real humans rather than the traditional programmed AI. These goblins you see here are not regular enemies either, you know, from other games. They are also artificial floodlights. And while there are tons of crucial details in that scene in its entirety, I'll let the anime get there and move on to Yujiro's words that we saw all the way back in the teaser trailers. I have always waited for you to come. Keep in mind that nobody from the trio have a proper recollection of their childhood memories in Underworld. This was made very clear in the previous trailer where I talked about it as well, but these words by Yujiro, he wasn't specifically referring to Kirito. He was waiting for someone to push him to do something good and that Kirito certainly did. More about that, again, will be explained in the anime as the mystery of Underworld is revealed piece by piece. I'll, I'll let the anime reveal all those for you. We get a glimpse of the Blue Rose Sword, one of those weapons in Underworld that is called a divine object due to its high priority rank, which you can think of an MMO stat requirement if you will until it is explained properly in the show. Again, I'm trying to leave as much as I can for you guys to discover in the anime while keeping myself stricted to what the trailer is showing and if you have further questions you can ask them in the comments or preferably on my twitter at gamertalk95, you know I can't reply to spoiler questions here in the comments but on twitter I, I can, I am more likely to answer you so if you want more in depth answers just ask over there and not in the comment section. And of course we cut back to the turning point I mentioned earlier at the goblin fight when Yujiro manages to break one of his shackles to protect someone who he cares deeply for in that cavern. Neat little detail by the way, but you can see the light producing plant in his hands, the same magic Alice conjured when they visited End Mountains about 6 years ago as kids. It's a small sign that Yujiro deep down was willing to chase the path as is indicated by his sentence to Kirito earlier. And last but not least, we cut back to 6 years ago again. To that day, the trio visited the cave. They did more than just visiting the cave on that day. In fact, they were certain they could go to the edge of the other side to glance at the dark territory, but what they saw was what you see here, the Integrity Knight, the same one we mentioned earlier, Dusolbert Synthesis 7, fighting against what is called a Dark Knight on the other side of the mountains, pretty much shocking the kids at what they see. The questions rise of course, and unlike the first trailer, thank god they are not answered in this trailer, who are the Axiom Church and who made the Taboo Index? These are questions I answered very shallowly on my what is Elicization video without revealing the nitty gritty stuff about them, so you can refer to that if you want to know a little bit more than what you have right now. As for Alice, who are you? I'm not gonna answer that question. The text on the screen, this precious name that should never be forgotten, you'll see what this means in the one hour long premiere episode, but yes, it does tie in with the memory loss aspect of this arc. And the subtitle, I'll wait for you, that is a special message from Alice to Yujiro and Kirito along with, you know, Kirito's hallucination of Alice. Again, I'm really tiptoeing around spoilers here, so sorry for the vagueness, I can't provide more, if I do, it's, it's serious spoiler territory. But hey, we get to see the Stacia window, or as you would know, a status window, for those not familiar with the term yet, of Giga Cedar once more like the previous trailers. But what's so special about this one is that we see how it's being conjured by the residents of Underworld, which was something we never saw yet in visual. And of course, the three kids being shocked at the assault of the Integrity Knight towards the Dark Knight, while the little girl eventually crosses the line nobody ever should by falling and barely grazing the Dark Territory with her hand. And that was the Elicization trailer, I really do hope this video was insightful for you and I do hope I didn't break through your personal spoiler tolerance level. Subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified for more on Sword Art Online and Elicization Explained episodes will be coming right after the first episode airs on October 6th. 
Again, if you have further questions that may or may not involve spoilers, just contact me on Twitter at Gamertalk95 and I can even reply with short videos if such a thing is ever needed. As promised, my patrons will be getting the script of this video a couple of days early and maybe, just maybe, I can upload the video a day early for them as well depending on my internet but no promises there. Again, if you want to support my channel there and get the benefits as well, you can do so at patreon.com slash gamertalk and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.